Hello there, and welcome to changelog video about VBS mods build number 5. In this video I would like to show you the key features of this update. Let's start with an anchor form. So what an anchor form is, is basically a new form, kind of like similar to Blockbuster's Empty Morph, which allows you to set up anchor points. So for example, this is useful with using the anchor form property, which allows you to basically set up where you want your model yet attached. For example, I want a two, two of these, uh, one for the back and the other one for the, for example, left arm and uh, move it lower. 90 degrees, 90 degrees here, and maybe do it like this. Now, using the sword's anchor property, I could animate the sword. Go first to Pinky, and the third one, then the same thing here, Pinky, and for example, if this way I could take and animate to that the arm goes backward, and then it goes to animate like this. So yeah, that's very convenient for creating anchors for to be used with anchor keyframe property. The next thing I want to talk about is the compatibility with Iris PBR. So basically, if I want to take the screen and make it glow, what I can do is uh, it has to be exactly the shaders that support PBR. I can go, open the models, find the model I need, which is a laptop, and then edit the skin, basically the texture. Here, I can add need two colors, completely black and completely blue. As you can see, it's 100% blue, and this is a hex code. So the parts that I want to glow, I'm going to fill a problem new layer with blue. But the rest can be filled with black. Now, if I'm going to export it as laptop underscore s, the screen will be glowing once I uh, once I apply the shader pack. So yeah, it's glowing. There are a couple of things that you have to know um, from what I have experienced. Shader packs you have to at least with complementary. It has to be SUS PBR format, and for the materials, you have to disable parallax occlusion mapping. If you don't disable it, look what's gonna happen. The default is integrated PBR. If I'm going to disable both, it's not gonna glow. But if I go enable SUS PBR, it's gonna glow, but there are gonna be some problems with the way it's maps. I don't know why exactly, but what you have to do is go to materials, lab PBR, and disable parallax occlusion mapping. Then it would work. I don't know exact specifics how these formats work and what those blue or other colors stands for, I think, if I make it green in, let's see, at the back of the PC. Let's try it out. I think this is supposed to make it so that the back cover would reflect um, you can see there's a little bit reflection, maybe I need more Maybe it wasn't green, but it was 
uh, red. Yeah, as you can see now, with the material painted as red, it now reflects and glows on the other side. Very cool stuff. So yeah, um, you have to do more research on how these uh, PBR formats works on your own. I don't know how it's done, but it's a very cool feature and works only with shaders. Next thing I want to show is a FFmpeg based motion blur. It was made by Miao and Lai in Minima and I ported the feature to BBS mode. So how this works, basically, you, let's say we have a scene where there's a little bit of motion. As you can see, the arm start to accelerate and it's not really visible as it's a motion blur. So in the settings, Video settings, video capturing, edit settings, and then you can add a little bit of motion blur. The bigger the number, the slower it takes to record the video, but it's also the better quality. Let's say I would pick the number two. I'm going to record the video. It's going to take some time to basically record because it takes extra frames in order to basically use the intermediate frames for creating the motion blur. Once the video is recorded, we can see the scene again here. It's, there is no motion blur, okay? But if we go and open the folder, and let's see the video. As you can see, if we, uh, close, uh, if we pause, you can see there is a noticeable motion blur. And as the motion goes faster, you can see there's more motion blur. And so that way you can have very nice quality motion blur without having to use any shaders. Next thing I want to show are three features in a single clip. Basically, the first one is the support for Geo.json, basically Bedrock Edition models. So how does this work is basically you just the same way. You have a models folder. Then you can just take and create, for example, a new folder here. Mobs. Then you can create like this was uh, horses. And then here I can grab the model animation JSON. The skin, for example, like this one. <laughs> and finally, new horses the geo.json. Here I would have the model in its separate own folder because now there is also support for nested folders. And at the same time, it's a GeoJSON. If you don't really want these anymore, there is a way to export model to bbs.json. I can remove these files and then simply have the same model, which is exported to bbs.json format. Finally, the change to the model system was also very nice, is the ability to have a synchronous loading, meaning that once you enter the menu, all models will be loaded one by one, one, by one on another thread. This would, is, uh, this would reduce the lag, basically. As you can see, um, models flicked, but that's because um, they were loaded very fast but if you have a lot of models it would be really there would be no freeze for a single moment another cool feature is the films menu here i can take and see all the scenes and then i can also take and play back for example i can play back with just without the camera or I can play back the same scene with a camera.
So yeah, beside that, it's also possible to take a scene, for example, I have here films. And here I can create maybe like a character, like Normy, and then can take and record Normy from here. I would see the camera here, and then there would be another camera clip, which would basically I would be able to see how it moves. The blue line is the center of the camera, and the white lines are the edges of the camera. Once I go back, it would say that the action was saved. Then in the Tools menu, I can see the actions that I recorded. Alternatively, you can go here, select the character, and record outside in the world. It basically does the same thing but from the film editor. Then go back to the film. And as you can see, the actions are here. I recorded this character directly in the world using the new record outside in the world feature. Beside that, Films menu has also copy play BS command, which allows me to see this scene in the world with a command, in case you need it for command block. And finally, we have entity selectors feature. What it does basically allows you to pick a form for a specific entity. So all entities would be replaced with uh, the model Andrew, for example, in this case. So here I have a cow, and now it's uh, Andrew. And no matter how many cows I have, all of them gonna be Andrews. <laughs> okay, but what if I want to target specific cow? For example, Donald, the cow, and if I change the nickname, it would become Okay. Uh, but the other cows, as long as they're not named Donald, they would be just cows and not Andrew. This way you could create maybe like battles between zombies and uh, other mobs and then make them appear in a specific way. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You can get BBS Mod Build 5 on Patreon, Avdian or Boosty by subscribing to BBS Early Access tier or above. I hope these features were useful for you or will be useful for you. And thank you for watching and bye! Um, yeah.